Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of Monkey Hero Adventures. We're going to pick up right where we left off with the uh, main scenario. And uh, here we go, talking to Minfilia. We just finished with Good King Moogamog. Owing to the tireless efforts of all concerned, we are at long last ready to bid farewell to Vesper Bay. So as to avoid drawing undue attention, we shall make the journey to Revenant's Toll in small groups, departing at irregular intervals. Lest you doubt, it is still my intention to conduct future operations openly, but on this particular occasion, the need for caution overrides all other concerns. To move north as one, as one ponderous caravan would only serve to invite attack. It seemed only right that I should be the last to leave, and I would have you remain with me till the end, monkey. Upon my departure, the Waking Sands will formally cease to be our headquarters, and the premises will be given into the care of Uriange. I had thought to relinquish the property, but he was quite adamant, and I had not the heart to disagree. These walls have borne witness to some of the brightest and darkest moments in our Order's history. Mayhap it be best that we do not forsake them entirely. Uriange shall remain here and devote his energies to studying the nature of primals. By the grace of the Twelve, he will one day discover the permanent solution that we have sought for so long. Of course, he will not be alone. Alice shall continue to work closely with him as well. Should they require our assistance, I have assurances they will not hesitate to contact us. Speaking of Ariange, would you inquire of him if any tasks remain undone? I cannot escape the feeling that I have forgotten something. Something important. Let's go talk to the OG. Thou art welcome, monkey, but I require no assistance. Pray, take thy leave unburdened by concern for my well-being. Verily thy countenance beseeks a desire to quit this place without further delay. Hmm. Mayhap thou thinkest this chapter of our tale concluded, that these halls should rightly be consigned to the annals of history. In man's eagerness to seize the future, how readily doth he set down the past. F full many a proud pioneer hath bravely striden into the great unknown, only to find that the banner of his ancestor, faded by the eons, and still man glorieth in his discoveries. This, tr this through his pride that wisdom doth ever give way to ignorance, while they who lurk in the shadow remain hidden, lost no sooner than they are found. All right. <sighs> Be not offended, monkey. Thy conduct have ever been beyond reproach. Despite thy surpassing strength and all thy many victories, thou hast never been so convinced of thine own greatness as to imagine thyself above the failings of thy forebearers. Mayhap it is the echo which hath opened thine eyes to the lessons of history. Would that the same could be said of... Ah! Uh-oh. Whence came that cry? The solar, twelve for ten, the antecedent. I'm on Uber Danger. M Monkey, you you must. Uh oh. Echo flashback. What happy hap happened? Tell me, Louisois, would you have done the same? Louisois Levelier was a remarkable man, wise beyond mortal measure. Would that I had met him prior to his passing. Oh, different person. I should change the voice. An Asian Here? How? How readily you see. 
You are indeed gifted antecedents. But you, you are not like the others. Your robes. Gifted but ignorant. Yet I shall not judge you harshly. The fault lies with your forebears. It has been a millennia. Mine are the robes of an emissary. Unlike he who came before, I have no quarrel with you. He who... You speak of La Habrea. La Habrea is a warrior. He fought. He fell. He may yet learn from his mistakes. Then he... He is still... Come. I can only confirm what you already know. There is no cessation, no oblivion, only expulsion. You... What are... We're ready when you are, milady. Is there nothing else? Is something the matter? Ah, I feel the same way. After everything that's happened here, it feels strange to leave. But I'm sure we'll soon get the used to Revenant's toll. Well, I'll let you say your goodbyes. Take as long as you like, my lady. We shall depart whenever you're ready. It is only as I expected. She lacks the gift and knowledge both. To her, we are indistinct. I... I do not understand. Shadowless, fleshless, formless. What truth there is in each tale is diluted by time and telling. Knowledge dictates expectation, and expectation colors perception. Thus did she perceive not. So it with all, is with all but a chosen few. Even you, when young, could not see with your eyes unclouded. You know nothing about me. Nothing. The gift grants you clarity, grants you focus. With it, you may in time come to see us as we are, rather than this crude approximation. La Habrea did not think so highly of the Echo. La Habrea is wrong about a great many things. The Echo is indeed a gift albeit one you have yet to master. And if we did, there would be no strife between our peoples, for we would be of one mind. I leave as I came, in peace, antecedent. May we meet again as friends. Wait, uh, stay where you are. Mayhap I was indelicate. Tis a mercy she shields her children from his grace with such resolve. It was also by her hand that you survived the ardor. I wonder. I take it there's no need to explain. Save your concern. He did no, me no lasting harm. Whatever his intention was, it was not to kill. I heard a cry. What, what happened? Are you alright? You look faint. Uh, you need to lie down? I, I could fetch you a flask of my special tonic. Ariange, send words to the students of Aldesian. Tell them to scour the archives, the forbidden tomes in particular. If there is any reference to an Asian robed in white, however oblique, I would know of it. 
an assian, my lady. What was what 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 was that what gave you cause to cry out? I did but moments ago glimpse a figure clad in white set forth from the waking sands. Yet Asians are wont to employ teleportation magics. Why would one be so brazen? I know not and care not. Find him, monkey. Turn every stone of Vesper Bay if you have to. Pray attend to Taru. I am told you are the warrior of light, but I would know for myself. I shall walk north, and you may choose to follow. Know, however, that you will be waylaid if you do. You may even perish. Should you survive, we shall speak anon. Okay, yeah, I'm not really worried about that at all. Is that all you got for me, man? Gargoyles and imps. Bunch of chumps. Remarkable. Truly remarkable. I thank you for granting me this indulgence. None save who bested La Habrea could endure such an examination. Have the laws of man grown so twisted in my absence that it is now permitted to lay hands on an emissary? You bore witness to my audience with the antecedent, did you not? Then you know I acted only in self-defense. I realize the same cannot be said of La Habrea. Even amongst his brethren, he is considered unique. Nevertheless, I cannot wholly condemn his misdeeds, for through them we discovered you, one so strong in the gift that he could cast us out. Your mother favors you still, that much is plain. 
but surely you must feel it. Her influence wanes, and her strength shall soon be spent. These lands, these people, this world, all shall soon change. As it was, so it shall be again, and it should always have been. Doubt my claims. Question my modems if you will. Only believe me when I say this. I am Elidibus, emissary, bearer of the word of the one true God, and we shall meet again. Pray return to the waking sands. One last time. Thank the god you've returned, monkey. After you left, I began to worry that I might have sent you to your doom. I take it our visitor proved elusive? Beg pardon? He was waiting for you. What did you do? What did he say? As it was, so it shall be again. Of when does he speak? A and of what exactly? The words of this Elidibus portend much but reveal nothing, save perhaps a measure of disdain for La Habrea. I only had hoped for answers, but it seems I shall have to be content with a wealth of additional questions. Let us set aside the matter of the Ashlean until after we have completed our move to the Rising Stones. There is but one final favor I would ask you before I depart. I believe I mentioned before that my father was a member of the Alamegan Resistance. The truth, however, is more complicated than that. As far as the Empire knew, he was their spy. He maintained the deception for nigh on half a decade, furnishing the Resistance with vital Imperial secrets while feeding his paymaster's subtly conceived misinformation. When he died some fifteen years ago, my father left behind his journal, which I have closely guarded ever since. It contains every shred of information he and his agents could steal on what they believed to be the single greatest threat to Eorzea, the Primals. Its wisdom has guided me through the years, and though there is much within I still do not understand, it is my hope that Oriange will feel, fear better, fare better. Tell him to treat it with care. It is all I have left of my father. Yo, Oriange, check out his book. It's a good one. I thought thee departed. To what does thou linger? Uh, this book right here. The father's final bequest, the daughter's lifelong labor. It's no small thing to surrender such a cherished memento. Well, well can I imagine the antecedent's pain. Upon my honor, I swear to spare no effort in the study of these materials, lest my lady's sacrifice be in vain. Beep, beep, beep. Link shall call. Monkey, this is Minfilia. Forgive me, but I cannot wait any longer. I have departed for the Rising Stones. If if you have yet to, uh, once you have given the journal to Oriange, I bid you come to the Seventh Heaven in Revenant's Toll. Tatru will be there to show you inside our new headquarters. Assuming you haven't already attuned to it, you may wish to make use of the new Aetherite in Revenant's Toll. After all, it is right on our doorstep. Yeah, I know. No more going to the Waking Sands. Woohoo! What you got here? The king lives! Let's, uh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, we know, we know. That's, uh, to open the extreme version of, uh, GameCube Model Mog. Every time you do a, uh, primal, you can open up the extreme version. In the Realm Reborn, with the three originals, you could do the hard modes, then the extremes. I did those off stream. Um, and then, uh, from now on, every story mode 
primal is called quote unquote hard mode and then you open up the extreme version after you beat it oh monkey you're here good good we were all wondering when you'd show up as I was just telling your rest of receptionist here I'm pleased to inform you that all documents have been prepared and signatures signed the rising stones is officially yours Splendid! From this day forward, I will spare no effort in seeing that it is welcoming and comfortable a home for us as the Waking Sands ever was. That said, this is all somewhat intimidating, is it not? So many unfamiliar places and unfamiliar faces. Most of the men and women you see around here in Revenant's Toll are adventurers who come and go as they wish. I dare say that that should make it easier for you to go about your business here. And it shouldn't hurt that Monkey has already made something of a name for himself. Isn't that so, Monkey? Why, that's wonderful to hear. Rest assured that this receptionist will work just as hard to see that our efforts do not skip a beat despite the relocation. And with that, Monkey, I do believe it's time for you to officially announce your presence to everyone inside. The antecedent and the others will surely be overjoyed to see you. Yeah. I'm pretty happy about being here too because it's so much easier just to teleport in. Also... Yeah, I'll do that off. All right, here we go. The Rising Stones. Check it out, there's Ishtola, Coltino, Thancred, Flamine. There's Hori Boulder, Papa Limo and Ida. We got all our stuff here. It's kind of cool. And then uh, there's Alphano, and there's the solar. It's not bad. It's, it's basically the same. A little bit bigger than our other office. Well, it is certainly spacious. Today marks a new beginning for the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. For today we declare our independence. We shall henceforth be beholden to no nation, but serve all of Eorzea's people proudly and openly. But this does not mean that we will sever our ties of the Eorzean alliance. On the contrary, the antecedent and I shall endeavor to strengthen them. Rest assured, however, that we shall not permit political considerations to influence our decisions. Our identity remains unchanged, as does our course. We are the scions of the seventh dawn, and our single purpose is to safeguard the future of Eorzea. For Eorzea! A moment of your time, monkey. I would speak of Elidibus. Oh shoot, Ariange's here. Pardon the intrusion, my lady. But the matter which bringeth me will admit no delay. Mine every attempt to contact the students of Baldachian have been met with silence. No one will respond. How odd. Allow me to try. You think that they just weren't picking up for Yanje? No response. Surely they would not ignore us. They have never yet, my lady. I fear we should assume the worst. No. No, I won't believe it. An outpost, perhaps, but not their headquarters. Their wards are beyond circumvention. 
Had, had they come under attack, they most certainly would have raised the alarm. No one could penetrate their sanctum unnoticed. But for those who lack the gift and the knowledge both... Oh no. Contact the agents in the field at once. If aught has befallen the students of Aldesian, they may know of it. Though, the thought of it pains me. Until such a time as we have evidence to the contrary, we can but assume the worst. Accordingly, we must needs seek another source of information on Olydipus. Tis possible the others in the homeland are possessed of such knowledge. Be fairly warned, however, they are unlikely to yield it unconditionally. Do what you must. Yet another unforeseen and unwelcome development. What could be next, I wonder? A visit from a crimson-clad Assian, maybe? Or Ocher? Or Puce? And which of our allies will fall silent? For a time, I thought we had gained the upper hand. When you shattered the dark crystal and cast out La Habrea, I dared to hope that we found a way to rid ourselves of the Assian menace. But I was wrong. He endures and may yet return. Upon that point, I have no doubt that Elidus spoke true. Yet there must be a way to destroy them utterly, a way to spare this world their unholy machinations. I dare not consider the alternative. There are forces at work we do not understand, monkey. I discern them all around, and disturbances too great and too no numerous to be dismissed as mere coincidence. Doubtless the paragrounds are involved, but how and to what end is far from clear. I know not what will come, but I do know that we will rise and meet it as one. Ah, my stalwart hero, your face is a picture of resolve. I know that you will be ready when the time comes. With luck, however, that will not be for a while yet. Pray return to your private affairs with my blessing. Should anything arrive, you will be informed. Kryle, where are you? Your intercession was not foretold. You object. We question. Our plans are in motion. Your intentions unclear. They survived the seventh ardor and are stronger now in the gift. Does that not intrigue you? No, it does not. Serve as you will, so too shall I. We labor not at cross purposes. The wisdom of his plan shall become apparent in time, when the veil is lifted from their eyes, and at long last they see. Truly, there is no rest for the weary. Scarce I begun to make myself at home when I received a request for assistance from Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. It would appear their storehouse and horizon has been the target of a series of covert robberies. Minor as they seemed in isolation, occasional discrepancies in the manifest were long dismissed as clerical errors. It was only during the concern's annual audit that the pattern became apparent. Significant quantities of crystals, and only crystals, were missing. I need to hardly tell you what that might imply. The brass blades charged with investigating the thefts believe that someone within the concern is selling crystals for profit. Alas, they have yet to be able to identify a likely suspect, and the concern's proprietors have grown frustrated with their lack of progress. Needless to say, I would not have agreed to intervene had the stolen goods been merely monetary value. If there is even a possibility that the thief acts out of self-interest, but in service to a primal, we can ill afford to wait for the blades to realize their mistake. Pray depart for Horizon at your earliest convenience. Rendezvous with Ishtola when you arrive. She and Thancred have already begun a preliminary investigation. I have every confidence 
that the three of you will get to the bottom of these thefts. I only hope our fears prove unfounded when you do. Ah, monkey, your assistance is most welcome. I have already spoken at length with the brass blades of the rose, albeit to little avail. It would seem that the thieves took great pains to conceal their activities. I could go into further detail, but your time might be better spent in conversation with Fufulipu. Uh, he is the officer charged with leading the investigation, and I would only be repeating that which he has related to me. If aught eluded my attention, mayhap it may will not elude yours. We'll see. What you got? F uh, Fufalupa? Oh, hello there. Monkey, was it? He surely said to expect you. Terrible business, these thefts. We have yet to confirm the quantity of crystal stolen, but I dare say it may be greater than... Ah, uh, but never mind that. I have news to share. A short while ago, the driver of a heavy-laden carriage refused to halt for inspection and broke through one of our checkpoints at the Royal Allegan Sunway. The cart bolted off towards Eastern Thanalan, where, thank the gods, I hear that our colleagues were able to apprehend them without further incident. A speeding carriage. That would seem a curious choice for thieves such, such, of such proven cunning. Yet, Amalja do have a foothold in Eastern Thanalan. Hmm... And what of their cargo? Did they carry crystals, we speak? We should be receiving a report any moment now, but I fail to see what else it could... Did you miss me, friends? I'm back, but I fear I come bearing disappointing news. Or on second thought, perhaps it's good news after all. Thancred, wherever have you been off to? Uh, I figured you had everything under control here, so I took a brief excursion to the east to check up on our Amalja friends. And wouldn't you believe it, I happened upon a runaway carriage on the way, and was able to do my small part to help my friends in the Blast Braids intercept it. In all my years, I have never seen such a prodigious quantity of somnus. The Blades were calling it one of the greatest hauls they'd ever seen. The stolen crystals, on the other hand, were nowhere to be found. Is that so? Alas, I suppose we have no choice but to resume our search elsewhere. We should reassess our options as well. Come with us, monkey. Against all expectation, it would seem the Amalja are innocent of this particular spate of crimes. By all indications, they have yet to replenish the store of crystals exhausted during their last attempt to summon Ifrit. Why I can't fathom is why anyone else would go to such lengths to obtain crystals and in such quantities. It cannot, it cannot be that we are dealing with simple thieves. If their motives were profit, why would they limit their trade to crystals alone? Plainly, we are missing something. While you think about what it might be, I shall inform Ariange of our progress, or lack thereof. Now then. <gasps> Thank goodness I almost skipped the Kazane. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Now then. I meant to do that. Since his voice acted. Tis I. The situation may be more complicated than we anticipated. Indeed. I shall remain watchful. Ere thou goest, another matter requireth thine attention. A young maiden, full eager to... 
Wherefore inquirest thou of her fairness? Oh, very well. Be she damsel or devil, I shall direct her steps to Revenant's toll. Save thine insinuations for one given to such impropriety. Thou shalt not find me amenable. Across the sea from the land of Doma have we traveled. We seek audience with the ruler of these lands. Who here speaks for you? Any broad ideas? A solitary flash or insight? No? Well then, for want of better suggestion, I say we try picking uh, Fufalupa's brain again. Who knows? If we work together, we may yet find something of use nestled away within it. Alright, dude. Give me something. Oh! But it is good you see you return. I have given some thought to the matter and it just hit upon a most disturbing possibility. How could I have been so blind? Calm yourself, Fufalupa. What is the disturbing possibility of which you speak? I was contemplating as to how the thieves' activities escaped our notice for so long, and then it came to me. What if there is someone among our own ranks conspiring with them, a traitor in our own midst? It would be most, un most unfortunate if your fears proved well-founded, Fufalupa. Indeed. If for some reason of security the concern decided to transfer the remaining crystals stored in Horizon to another location, their plans would be discovered the moment the brass blades were informed. Ah, but such a shipment would surely be well guarded. Would thieves as wily as ours risk open confrontation? Mayhap not, but neither would the concern be eager to present them with such an obvious target. Nay, they may instead elect to carry out the transfer in secret, to entrust the goods to us, let's say, a lone Makote miner traveling without escort so as not to attract undue attention. But who? Ah, uh, uh, I see. Yes, the concern may well elect to do that, but to travel with so much cargo would be a strenuous task indeed, and this miner would certainly need to rest upon the way. Mayhap north of the bridge to Hammerley? A fine spot for a rest, would you not agree, monkey? Alas, the role of the Makote Miner is taken, so you will have to lie and wait to the north, and I will do the same to the south. Ahem. <clears throat> Forgive me, my friends, uh, but I have received new orders. I must inform my men at once. Call me a cynic, but I would be surprised if these thieves lay down their arms and surrender. See that you come prepared to offer more than some encouragement. Or offer them some encouragement. Oh, I encourage them real good.
Damn, he's still looking hot in that minor outfit. Stubborn to the last, as expected. You are unharmed. A gang of sea wolf thieves, and in Thanalan, no less. I suppose it's the first time for everything. Sea wolves? All of them? Aye, and all with the same taste and facial tattoos. Blue, in case you were wondering. Our thieves are a long way from home. Thancred, if you would be so good as to attend to the outstanding matters in Horizon, I have inquiries to make. To Horizon, then. Fufulupa will want to hear about your meeting with the thieves. I think I'm going to start taking my hood off during, um cutscene so I can see my facial expressions. On behalf of the Brass Blades of the Rose, I thank you for your service to Horizon. Ah, but we have not been idle. While you were afield, we succeeded in identifying the traitor within our ranks. Is that so? Then by your leave, I should very much like to have a word with this fellow in private. Uh, no. I'm afraid that will not be possible. Regrettably, he, uh, managed to subdue the unit of blades dispatched to detain him and made good his escape. Oh, for the love... And how did he manage that exactly? Your men haven't been sampling the Somnus we confiscated, have they? Or was he a giant in disguise? No, but he was quite strong. A sea wolf. Laments and born and raised, I believe. But, but do not worry. We will find him. You have my word on that. I see. Pray keep me apprised of any developments. Yes. He's standing right next to me. Understood. I fear our time together is at an end, my friend. Your services are required elsewhere. Awfully disappointing. I know. But one must follow where duty leads. You might try to take a little, might try to look a little disappointed, or do you mean to give me another one of your stoic nods? You do, you do, don't you? The antecedent bid tell me to make for Vesper Bay, where young Alphano awaits your coming most eagerly. It was he who requested your assistance. Some commotion or incident, I'm not privy to the details. While you do whatever it is that Alphano has planned for you, I shall endeavor to track down our traitorous bla brass blade. And when I do, you may rest assured that we will all have our answers. Who needs to go through a tunnel when you can go over it? You are late. No matter. I know where our visitors are headed. From what I've been able to gather, the vessel belongs to a band of domans who seek an audience with the Sultana. You are familiar with Doma, yes? And authored? Well, like the rest of the nations on the eastern continent, it is ruled by the Garlean Empire. Given our visitors' unannounced arrival, as well as the state of their ship, I suspect they did not leave their homeland under the best of circumstances. Needless to say, I should be very interested to hear their tale, and more importantly, what they know of the current state of affairs in the Empire. Such information could prove most useful. We will be fools not to pursue this opportunity, do you not think? Come, with me to Uldah, monkey. Unless I'm mistaken, and I rarely am mistaken, we will find the Domans bickering with the Sultan Sworn on the Royal Promenade. You are uncertain of 
your role in the proceedings? Insurance. If our guests are not themselves Imperial agents, it seems fair to assume that they may be being pursued by some. And if not, who better than to have on hand in the event of an unforeseen diplomatic incident? Besides, I do so enjoy sparkling repartee. Your sparkling repartee. Satisfied? Good. I shall see you in Olda. Mask him back up. It matters not how many times you ask. Without the necessary permissions, none shall pass. Pray understand, good sir. We have not the leisure to lodge a formal petition. Time is of the essence. All I ask is that you summon your superior. Allow me to plead my case. Surely you can grant us that small kindness. Away with you, and darken these doors no longer. I will not ask you again. You know not what you do. I gather your pleas fell upon deaf ears. A loyal man with a cold heart. I know his kind well. I hope you will find me more to your liking. Alphano Leveillet, at your service. A friend. Which I believe makes me very nearly unique. In this part of the world, at least. Few indeed are your allies in Ulda. Yet, you will need some if you wish to endure yourselves to the wealthy and powerful. Pray, join me and my associate at the quicksand. There we may explain your situation to us, and we shall see if there is aught we can do to help. remember what that one is. Anyway. We have traveled some several thousand miles across the sea from the nation of Doma in hopes that we might find sanctuary in these lands. Sanctuary, Lady Yugiri? Aye. Lying within Othard, Doma was under the dominion of the Galian Empire, as I'm sure you are aware. When the War of Succession broke out in Galamald, we aspired an opportunity to free ourselves from the yoke of imperial oppression and took up arms. Only to be crushed. And so I gathered what few domans escaped the reckoning and guided them hither to your shores. A war of succession? 
Then the Emperor... Forgive me. You said that Doma was under Imperial rule, did you not? Doma is gone. Raised to the ground as an example to the other provinces. Twelve have mercy. And your people. On a ship anchored in Vespa Bay, flying borrowed colors. Many were complicit in the rebellion, or are kin to those who were. They will not come ashore until I send word that it is safe to do so. I sought an audience with your rulers, but was summarily refused. The lords of Ulda are not wont to entertain foreign refugees without suitable encouragement. Mayhap I was foolish to expect otherwise. But our supplies run low, and we have young ones in urgent need of care. I have seen the tents outside the gates, however. We are not the first to seek asylum, nor will we be the last. Be that as it may, Ulda is no friend to Garlemald. Your tale would stir the hearts of many men and women here. The Sultana and the Syndicate will not be so easily swayed, but I shall see that you are granted an opportunity to plead your case. This is within your power? Well, far be it from me to boast, but I do have the ear of certain influential individuals. I am in your debt. Lady Yugiri, Forgive me for observing, but your choice of attire seems like to evoke feelings of mistrust. Men are wont to fear the unfamiliar. We know this from experience. We seek only to spare the people of Uldar unnecessary disquiet. I shall defer to your experience, then. I thank you for your understanding. It seems I have urgent business with the Flame General. I leave our guests in your capable hands. If I may, sir, as I said earlier, we have been at sea for some several moons and our supplies are all but spent. I have not the heart to repeat the tales of our tribulations, nor would it please you to listen to them, I think. Suffice it to say, however, sacrifices have been made. Though it shames me for beg for more, when you have already offered so much, desperation compels me. Gentle sir, if you and your associates could spare any provisions, anything at all, it would go a long way to lessen the suffering of my people. Um, yeah. Hells! Why didn't you say so sooner, monkey? Of course I'll help. You couldn't have picked a better day to tell the truth. A wealthy merchant and his entourage were due to have a banquet here on the morrow. Just but sent word they can't come, meaning I got a boatload of foodstuffs and no one to feed. Best of all, they paid for the lot in advance. So go and call on... Friduri and Catherine at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Tell them I said to, sh to ship a little prince's order to the Waking Sands. Oh, and... If they argue, just show them those letters. That'll set them straight. My, that's a rather odd request. Mayhap you misheard her instructions? Nah, man. You know, you shouldn't encourage them like this. They'll just start to expect it. You mark my words. Wow, bitch. She's in the business of feeding refugees now. I ain't normally one to question Mistress Mamodi's judgment, but that doesn't seem wise to me. 
Yeah? Well, shut the fuck up and do it anyway. I'll not speak for the children, but if you ask me, any man who can't earn a crust deserves to go hungry. Okay. So it's... Hmm. I got some things to say. I won't say them. I don't know who's watching, but, um... If those are generally your viewpoints on, uh, people in need, um... With all due respect, uh, go fuck yourself. They didn't give you any trouble, did they? Good. Now go and tell Lady Gary it's all in hand. Will do. I... I dare not hope for such magnanimity, much less expect it. Mistress Mimodi is generous indeed. I shall be sure to thank her most humbly. Are you better? I have some good news, Alphano. Lady Aguirre, I briefed the Flame General on your situation. I think you will be pleased with his reply. We have been granted an audience. Before the Sultana and Syndicate both, we shall return to the Royal Promenade at once. You have done much for us, Master Alphano. I swear we shall return the favor. Not as owed, Lady Aguirre, for not has been given. This small favor you fairly won with your words, and it is with your words that you must win the favor of the Syndicate. Then I shall choose them with care. You will be accompanying us, yes? Good. Your presence may serve to remind the Syndicate of the true meaning of philanthropy, and that nothing so unpalatable will be required of them assuming the domans are willing to earn their keep. Come, the Flame General awaits us at the Royal Promenade. A pleasure, Sergeant Hero. The others are already inside. Let's not keep them waiting. I, Yugiri of Doma, am honored to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid, to request that you grant my people asylum. I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of U, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of imperial rule, and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived, how many do they number? More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of a number of ships which escaped the purge. 
It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. Pray understand we do not beg a boon, but propose instead an arrangement. We would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid. What are the Syndicate's opinions on this matter? I, for one, think it's a marvelous idea. Lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot, and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored. If they are willing to work, I see no reason not to let them. The head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? The law is the law. Lord Lola Rito? Tell me. Are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamedan refugees. They live hand to mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the immortal flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamigan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes. The law is the law. And so our visitors remained in little Alamigo. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld. Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord, I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than you. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Ulda's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability, since he began employing refugees. How 
How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. To accept the Doman refugees or not. Those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. That it were within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of a man! If that bastard had not forsaken the eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion. As you observe, Lord Lalarito is afraid to speak his mind, not afraid to speak his mind, nor is he like to change it. Oft have I wondered how so many, how men so skilled at weighing with the worth of things should be so incapable of seeing the value in people. Bah, I waste no more words on him. Not when the Domans are in need of aid. Everyone, follow me to the Hall of Flames. You're not my daddy. The Syndicate has spoken, and I see no point in moving the matter reconsidered. The Monitorists have played their position clear. Agreed. Olda is not an option. Nor are Limsa Lamenta or Gadania, I judge, given the state of their internal affairs. Which leaves our Doman friends confined to a ship. Gods have thought of them huddled in an airless hold with no hope of better treatment. Would that I had more time to find an alternative. A place not bound by the concerns of the great nations. Minfilia. That is precisely what I wish to discuss. I understand the Syndicate's decision, I do. We all wish to preserve that which is ours, especially when we believe it to be under siege. But I cannot meekly accept this judgment, not while my people suffer. Would it be out of the question for the Sultanate to accept us for a limited time? Maybe a week, maybe, or, or even just a few days? Excellent. I shall keep you informed. Lady Aguirre, I have a proposal, if you would hear it. 
Out with it, Master Alphano. The headquarters of my order, the Science of the Seven Dawns, stands in a place called Revenant's Toll, an outpost in Mordona. Like most outposts, it is frequented by mercenaries and other men of action and lacks the comforts of a more well-established settlements. However, the leaders of Revenant's Toll have been doing their utmost to change that. To that end, they have need of an able-bodied individuals willing to work as frontier hands, hard labor, lest you doubt, with naught save food and shelter but by way of reward. Terms not unlike those that you proposed, Lady Yagiri. Though I would not hear a word against our beloved Uldar, Revenant's Toll would offer certain advantages, the absence of unhelpful bureaucracy being the most obvious. If they can accommodate us, we shall gladly accept. Master Alphano, once again I found myself in your debt. Pray do not think, thank me, my lady. The life your people will go to is one of hard labor and few comforts, as I told you. And before that, there reminds the matter of how they may safely be born to Revenant's Toll, which is no small feat, considering the distance and their present condition. Mayhap the Old On Adventurers Guild can be of assistance. Look for me there anon, monkey. Lady Yogiri, if you and your people are, would accompany me, we may discuss what aid the Immortal Flames can provide. We are concerned that the Doman refugees may find the journeyed revenants toll too much to bear. Too long have they been sequestered upon their ship, with insufficient supplies and scarce room to breathe, let alone stretch their limbs. With that in mind, Mr. Smomodi has kindly offered to accommodate the Domans until such time as they are ready to set out for Mordona. Those healthy enough to travel will embark soon as transportation has been secured, while those too weak to leave at once will be permitted to stay until they regain their strength. What news? Transportation remains our greatest obstacle, General. Is there aught the Immortal Flames can do? I fear that exceeds our mandate. Were it a smaller number, mayhaps it would go unnoticed. But the Syndicate will not bear the cost of escorting more than 200 domains to Mordona. When government fails to act, the responsibility falls to us private citizens. I will engage the services of the 77th Caravans on the Doman's behalf. Very well. We shall begin to contract negotiations at once. Your generosity is most welcome, my lord. After all that has been befallen these good people, it's the least I can do. Come what may, you shall ever have a friend in Ulda, Lady Yagiri. And you in Revenant's Toll, my lord. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of work to do. Lady Aguirre, let's put our heads together and settle the details of our arrangement, shall we? I would entrust the task of escorting our Doman friends to you, after you have rested your own road-weary legs, of course. What do you say? Sure. As we speak, the Domans prepare to de for departure at Vesper Bay, wherefore they will be transported to carriage by Uldah. That said, this has all been decided rather suddenly, and it would not surprise me if the refugees required some assistance in coordinating their pre preparations. Monkey, I would have you return to Vesper Bay and facilitate the process through tasks great and small. In short, whatever must be done, do it. Speak with a man named Hozan when you arrive. As Lady Zagiri tells it, 
He has been designated the leader of the first group. Greetings. Alphano informed me that a scion would be arriving to help with the preparations. I am honored to meet you, though shamed as well. A great warrior should not be tasked with such trivialities. Never mind. It's fine. Aye, I knew from a glance what manner of man you were. I too have some skills at arms, as do many of our people. Pray forgive this trifle, but might I trouble you to help us round up the children? They have been given into my care. They are most adept at staying hidden from my sight, but perhaps your keen eyes will succeed where I have failed. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. You have my thanks, friend. Pray seek out my son, Yozan. He can tell you more. Uh, I forgot the stupid hidden children quest. So annoying. Oh, hello there. I'm Yozan, son of Hozan. We'll be coming with us today to Uld Coming with us to Ulda? I hear we're traveling by horse bird ca drawn carriage. But, don't you think they're queer? Giant birds that ride like horses? I still want to try riding one, but... What's what's that? You're looking for others? Oh, don't worry. I already told them to get ready for the carriages. I need your help, though. We're just finishing a game of hide-and-seek. Three players are still hiding, and since Lady Aguirre told us to take it really seriously, they won't move until they're found. But Vesper Bay isn't that big, so I bet you can find them in no time. Alright, well, so they did change this, because it used to be five kids. So now it's only three. I remember one of them was over here. Alright, so that one's still there. Hey, you're not Yozan. Who are you? I'm Kuharu, Monkey Hero. Oh, I'm Kaharu, Monkey Hero, eh? I didn't know anyone was else was... Wait a minute. You're one of them, um, stallions, aren't you? No, no, scions, scions. You must know Lady Yagiri, right? Isn't she great? She's really good at hide-and-seek, too. Oh, right. It's almost time to go. Nice meeting you, Monkey Hero. And then, oh, there's one behind the carriage over here. Nice, okay. Um, are you playing? Ah, oh, no fair. Yozan didn't say anything about adults. Huh? We get to ride a horse bird carriage? I don't know. It sounds scary. But if Yozan says it's safe, I'll go. And then what was killing us before is there was used to be one, like, right in here. Hiding right there. But I think, yeah, they think they took that one away. So, yeah, the other one's up here. Yeah, they made them really easy now. All right. How'd you find me? Bah, I guess I need more practice. Or maybe you're just good at this. I mean, the Garleans didn't find me. Uh, also, you know, we didn't have flying back then either, so... Wonderful, all the children are accounted for. Hide and seek. Ah, I see that you're curious. It is quite simple, really. Lady Aguirre thought it would be best the children know what to do in case the Garleans found us. I should hope that those days are behind us, but I nevertheless take comfort in knowing that we are prepared. Kind of sad. The first paravan is due to depart shortly, followed by the rest at regular intervals. My family and I, including my stubborn old father, Home, will be traveling in the lead carriage together with Koharu, whom I believe you've already met. Though I understand the road to Ulda is regularly patrolled by your brass blades, it would give us great comfort if you were to agree to accompany us on our journey. Once again, I thank you for your kindness. Whenever you're ready to leave, please inform the coachman. Well, of course. Eager to be off, are you? Alright, well, I was meaning to have word with you about that. Runner of the Blade says we might have a problem. A fierce-looking beastie's been sighted out south of the bridge of Hammerley. Might be someone's eyes playing a trick on him, of course, but I don't pay to gamble in this business. Now, if I know you can handle yourself in a fight, there's an, 
but this lot here is another story. So I was thinking you might go on ahead and take a quick look around. Make sure the area is safe. And if you come across anything dangerous, you know what to do. When you're satisfied the way is clear, meet us outside Horizon. The brass blades tell me the road there is safe, so I reckon we can make it that far on our own. Assuming the self-same bastards don't try to rob us, that is. He has got a point. So there was a beastie. Was being the operative word, eh? Haha. <laughs> yeah, I killed it. Well fought, sir. Well fought. Ah, if only I were in better health, I should have been proud to stand at your side. Pay my son no mind. He forgets his responsibilities preclude acts of dare doing. Daring do. Hmm. Be that it is may, I cannot help but envy you. Had we been able to call upon heroes of your strength and skill in Doma, things would have been very different. <sighs> but we cannot change the past. Those who fought and fell are forever lost to us. Lost but not forgotten. Lady Yagiri's kinsmen least of all. They fought fiercest, though they knew full and well it was in vain. She had every right to walk away, yet she chose to stay. Food, shelter, the promise of a better life. All of this we owe to her. How does one even begin to repay such a debt? In kind, Father. She who ga has given everything, we shall give our all. Whatever work there is to be done, we shall do without question. Ditch digging, brick laying, it matters not. Revenant's toll will grow and prosper by our hands. Hey, Mr. Monkey, uh, Kaharu and I want to know why you became an adventurer. I knew it. That's what I told Kaharu, but she didn't believe me. It's my turn now. Excuse me, Mr. Monkey. I've got a question. What's Revenant's toll like? Is it pretty? Oh, so you live there with your friends. That means you'll always be there to protect us. Enough, Kaharu. It's my turn. Mr. Monkey, when I'm older, I want to be strong like you. What do I have to do? Of course. To be a better adventurer, you need to go adventuring. All right, all right. That's enough questions for Mr. Monkey. That's not fair. Why does Yozan get to ask two questions? I want to know about adventuring just as much as he does. Just one more, please. Do you think I could be an adventurer like you one day? Really? Then I will. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Monkey. I won't forget it. 
I'm going to be an adventurer too. When we get to Revenant's Toll, let's make an adventurer guild for Domans. We'll protect our friends and punish the wicked, just like Mr. Monkey and Lady Ugiri. Yeah, just like Mr. Monkey and Lady Ugiri. We can talk more about it in the carriage on the way. Uh, will you be joining us? Oh, monkey, I take it the first group has arrived. Excellent. Hmm, is there aught else? No, no, I have matters well in hand here. You and Lady Aguirre should travel to Revenant's Toll forthwith. It is past time Lady Aguirre met with the guild representatives in Revenant's Toll. Since I do not foresee any further matters arising here in Thanalin, which might require your personal attention, I would instead have you serve as an escort to the Doman delegation for the duration of the journey. Speak first with Slathborn upon your arrival. He is the one with whom the Domans will be working most closely, I should think. Afterwards, introduce Lady Geary to Minfilia and the Guild Emissary. If both meetings go well, the resulting ties should stand with the Domans in good stead for that which is to come. Safe travels, monkey. And this must be the esteemed Lady Aguirre and her associates. I greet you all as friends and bid you welcome to the toll. I hope you do not find our dearth of fineries off-putting. Poor though we may seem, we have a wealth of spirit and camaraderie to spare. You see, race and creed don't enter into it here. We welcome all sorts, provided they're willing to earn their keep, of course. We are no strangers to hard work, Master Slathborn. You may rest assured that we will carry out your orders with due diligence. Oh, not for a moment did I doubt your commitment, my lady. Pray understand, I give the same speech to all the new arrivals. And you needn't bow or he uh, your head or call me master either. We are both frontier hands, and as far as I am concerned. As you wish, Slathorn. May this meeting mark the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship. Ooh, fruitful. Our guests have yet to meet the antecedent. Seven hells, monkey. Why are you wasting time with me? See them to the Rising Stones. To whom much is given, much is expected. Forgive me, I require a moment to compose my thoughts before meeting with your leader. We shall join you at the Rising Stones and on. Okay. Tis no use. Our attempts to reach the students at Baudissian continue to meet with failure. Orianger has explored other avenues of inquiry, but they too have yielded naught. We will preserve our course, 
yet within our hearts the truth is clear. We are but awaiting confirmation of that we already know. How fare the Domans? I am given to understand you were kept quite busy in Vesper Bay. Mayhap you question the wisdom of aiding refugees when the primal threat remains unresolved. I should not blame you if you did, nor would I deny that this matter falls outside of our normal purview, but that as it may, I could not ignore the plight of these refugees, not when it was within our power to help them. I agree. I don't know why you would think I wouldn't want to. Lady Ugiri is here. Please show her in. I should very much like to meet her. We have no objections. Pray do so with our blessing. Your answer pleases me beyond words, my lady. But are you quite certain? We have no way of knowing how many r answer, how many might answer my summons. In the event that Revenant's toll cannot accommodate us all, we would need to find an alternative solution. Should that come to pass, we will find it together. As ever, it has been a pleasure, Antecedent. Alas, we must take our leave if the first carriages are due to arrive at any moment. Should you require aught else, pray speak with Slathborn, Yeti Aguirre, monkey. Lamine and I will make all the necessary preparations to ensure that our dome and friends feel at home upon their arrival, though I must admit that I am still troubled about the matter of the missing crystals. Ishtola should be returning anon with a report from a field. Mayhap you could wait here and speak with her upon her arrival. How goes the fishing? Caught anything slippery? Aye. Our suspicions were well founded. The Serpent Reavers are indeed the culprits. The plot thickens. Has there been any movement in Thanalan? It has been blessedly quiet. Which is to say the Amalja are being no more or less of a nuisance than usual? Summoning a freet with such crystals as they have hoarded? Urianger too reports not out of the ordinary. Then we have our explanation. Your explanation for what, pray tell? For the recent spate of crystal thefts in Thanalan, we naturally assumed that the trail would lead us back to the Amelja. Yet it did not. It led us across the sea unto Vilbrand. Vilbrand? There have been reports of increased Sahagin activity of late. Oh gods, they mean to summon Leviathan? That is the way of it, I fear. Whilst conducting our investigation on behalf of the mineral concern, we came upon evidence implicating the Serpent Reavers. With the aid of the Maelstrom, I was able to verify our suspicions. It is only a matter of time before Leviathan returns to harrow the seas. But there is more. One of the Sahagin, an elder by my judgment, spoke of attaining the gift and knowledge of eternity. Ugh. Such a disturbance in the ether. If I did not know better, I should think this device defective. And there is the explanation. Soon, soon it shall. 
shall begin. Our Lord shall rise mid surging waves to wash away the finless one. And I shall be granted the gift and knowledge of eternity, and with the emissary stand equal. Then shall I know no cessation, no oblivion. Whence comes this promise of immortality? The emissary? We have outstayed our welcome. The gift and knowledge. Are the two of you quite well? You... you shared that vision, did you not? Yeah, I saw it. Even before the Sahagin made mention of the Emissary, I recognized Elidibus's words. He is behind this. But surely it is not within his power to grant the Echo. My lady, Unless we act swiftly, Leviathan will rise again. The Admiral has already requested that we intervene to prevent this. Failing that, we are to attend to the Primal's extermination. She will have our full cooperation. Let us make haste to Limsa Lominsa. I mean to play a part in this mission. Tataru, pray, take charge in my absence. My lady, are you sure this is wise? I am aware of the risks, but there is something I must see with mine own eyes. The true nature of the Echo. Very well. I shall not stand in your way. On the condition that you permit me to accompany you as bodyguard. Your company is ever welcome, Thancred. I take it something ill is afoot. Aye, a primal is about to be loosed upon Eorzea. A primal? A godlike being whose very existence is a bane upon the land. We scions of the Seventh Dawn are sworn to put an end to their kind. I see. Know then that I am learned in the arts of war. In return for the kindness you have shown my people, I would lend you my blade. It would be most welcome. When contending with a primal, one can never have too many able allies. If you crave a more intimate understanding of the problems facing Eorzea, this experience is like to provide it. Be sure to come well prepared. Alrighty, guys. Uh, I know it's about to get interesting, but that's going to be it. I do have to leave for work, and uh, we're going to pick up right here later on when I get back. I'll get the next episode going, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're on our way to uh, see if we can't stop Leviathan from being summoned, or if he does get summoned, stop him. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.